Hello creative people, have you ever wondered how you can do such an emotional portrait in loose watercolor? It's not that easy as it can look like because it seems very intuitive and effortless but it actually takes some uh, uh, little tricks to do it and uh, of course lots of practice. I'm still in the process of learning how to do a proper loose watercolor portrait but I want to give you today some of the tips I learned in the past month of exercise. This is with ink, this is with watercolor, this is also in watercolor on cotton paper. Before we get into the practice, I uh, would like to tell you some of the main tricks we can use. First of all, we want to individuate the area that are more in the shadow, normally uh, the mouth, the eyes and the air and the part of the under the neck. We will use colors directly from the tubes because uh, it will be uh, more intense and the first layer is the layer where you do the 90% of the work in a loose watercolor portrait. You need to put the color on top and then leave it. Uh, don't overwork it. I leave a good part of the portrait in white Something also I like to do is to try to mix the colors directly on the paper, normally just a couple, because uh, it's already quite difficult to do it in monochromatic. And you can uh, uh, get some nice shades in this way. Here also there are uh, two colors, although it seems like they merge into one in most of the area. We do the first layer uh, wet on dry. When it's completely uh, dried, we go on top of the details to enhance the contrast, like in the eyes, contour, or in the mouth, with uh, also wet on dry technique. Let's go! I prepare my sketch. Reference is from unsplash.com and I put it in the description of the uh, video. It's on Bao on cotton paper, my favorite paper to study and make a quick exercise, also because of the size of this sketchbook. So I'm gonna, as I said, work wet on dry and I will choose uh, a brush that is big compared to the size of the portrait. Mm, this portrait is quite tiny, in particular the face, so I will not take a too big brush, probably this Da Vinci Casaneo number 6, or I could take also the number 8 maybe, and then I prepare my color directly from the tube. So I prepare my color here, it's a Prussian blue and brown matter, Renaissance. I will prepare the color next to each other so I can easily mix them. We go for the first layer. So this quite big brush doesn't allow me to follow the shape of the figure very well. I will then be more intuitive in my painting strokes and I will mix the colors directly on the paper. mix the color directly on the paper and separate the warm tones from the cold tones. I try to keep the warm tones on top and on the face and the cold ones on the bottom part. I cannot uh, follow the feature because of this technique and because of the size of the brush and I don't even try. So 
So now that the first layer is completely dry, I can go on top with the second layer to enhance the contrast and the color in some areas. And I add these uh, drops, taking advantage of the inclination of this uh, piece of paper. So this is now almost completely dry. I erase some of the pencil marks. I switched to a brush with a good tip in order to do these details. So this is my Renaissance squirrel imitation brush. It's uh, a neutral tint made of blue and uh, brown. As much as possible I try to be intuitive with my brush strokes and not to be too much on the side, even if I know it's quite difficult for me. So during this video I actually learned something as well. So this is a bonus tip for the end of the video. This was the first version of this painting and I did like a basic color mainly with this uh, uh, Russian blue and then uh, only some details with a brown meta on the hair and so on. So it ended up looking like a zombie and uh, was very dark and was almost impossible to uh, make it warm again uh, and it, I ended up of course overworking it and uh, it was uh, trash at that point I couldn't do anything so I decided to starting from the beginning and this result uh, is much more pleasant to me uh, what I did was uh, to have a very thin layer full of water in the beginning and I used the warm tones for the face and the cool tones for the clothes and I think this looks much better also you can achieve of course the highest contrast this in this way I hope this uh, video was helpful and uh, if so please uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so far most of you uh, watching the videos uh, are not subscribers but uh, this could help me a lot so please subscribe to the channel and I see you in the next video thanks a lot bye